Hello, YouTubers. This is a special session where uh, I get to talk to my friend here, Ethan. Uh, Ethan is is a Java engineer. He builds systems in Java, and he's also super excited about you know using you know O data into uh, uh, Java based uh, APIs and RESTful APIs, web applications to kind of bring the best capabilities out there. Uh, uh, Ethan reached out to me about a week, two weeks ago, maybe, you know, and yeah. we basically talked for a little bit about, you know, our ability to kind of bring OData Neo uh, into the Java world and what would that take and, you know, the kind of development that it would require to kind of solve these kind of problems. Uh, Ethan, uh, how are you? <laughs> I'm I'm doing great. Uh, I'm glad to talk about it. Um, I yeah. uh, I still struggle to call myself a, a Java engineer since I've... Uh, been kind of flung into Java development, uh, started in Salesforce development, mm -hmm. uh, but um, we uh, had a problem with integrating a legacy data system with mm -hmm. our Salesforce implementation. And uh, I uh, kind of got the integration um, bug and I fell in love with uh, trying to connect two systems to each other. And that's where uh, Java was necessary. And um, I fell in love with Java, so uh, and I have I've been falling in love with OData, so I'd be yes. excited to uh, figure out how to apply uh, your new implementation or new iteration of OData into the yeah. Java realm. Yeah, this is this is really excited. Like you know, for the longest of time, we've mostly attracted like kind of .NET you know uh, based engineers. But uh, it takes a lot of like open mindedness to kind of venture into different technologies, different frameworks, things like Salesforce, you know, and needs existing implementation with Java and go and say, what's out there in this other world? Like rarely, sometimes every once in a blue moon, I would go out there and say, OK, what's the Python folks doing these days? How did the Scala folks solve a particular problem and stuff like that? So it's really awesome. I'm really happy that you reached out and you kind of wanted to kind of explore that. And uh, a part of, you know, our discussion, you know, I said, you know what, Ethan, let's let's show people how OData works with Java today. And he has something ready for us, I think. I don't know. You know, what do you think? Do you have something to show us today? <laughs> uh, I, I, I do. I, I have a very simple tutorial uh, that uh, Olingo uh, provides. Uh, it's it's uh, fairly rudimentary, but I think it does give a glimpse into OData in the Java world as um Olingo is the most popular repository, uh, Java OData repository on GitHub. Oh, um, and, okay. Yeah, OData uh, version 4.0, um, and that is the one that Salesforce um, has a OData adapter for. Ah, uh, um, so this is Apache Olingo, mm -hmm. and that's how... Interesting, interesting. Okay, okay, and it's all iteration is of OData in addition to JavaScript too. Oh, that's the client. Okay, the client, yeah. Setting up the API, that's that's the interesting part. Interesting. I never heard of Olingo, man. You're you're pulling me into your world, into your universe. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm I'm afraid that not many people have heard of Olingo. Um, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> it, it's it as you can see. I mean, it doesn't support uh, a ton of um, system query operations okay. um but uh it does the job um as i can tell for my for my own implementation necessary um but nice. uh yeah the the thing i have is just a simple server um uh example um as that's what i'm most interested in in developing you know an odata producer because uh we uh the um Mm -hmm. At my job, we're we're dealing with a legacy data system um, mm -hmm. that has like 30 years worth of very old data, and uh, we're slowly trying to integrate it with with Salesforce. So, nice. um, so yeah, building up a um, an O data like producer uh -huh. uh, that can scale and uh, hopefully be our integration method uh into the future is what i'm interested in uh and okay. Okay. it doesn't seem like olingo uh, has a lot of support going into the future um yeah yeah it needs a more uh, bigger community bigger uh, push to yeah it. yeah 
Yeah. yeah. If Java, so Java is popular. Java is one of the most popular programming languages out there. In fact, it's actually the biggest influencer on uh, C sharp. I don't know if you've ever C-sharp. seen. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen the. Uh, let me show you. Uh, have you ever seen uh, the programming programming languages uh, tree? There is a very famous programming languages tree where it basically shows you where every language originally came from, like its ancestry. Wow. So you'll see C sharp comes from Java. Java is built in C++. C++ and Bill is built in C. C is built in B and then all the way up to assembly oh, after assembly, BCPL. Okay. So you can see all these kinds of different languages that's out there. That's fascinating. I've never seen yeah. that. Yeah, I love how Lisp started its own branch. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Joss, Joss has all the way down to Coke and Filecomp. Uh, you'll see some uh, some languages. Where's JavaScript? I'm trying to find JavaScript for you. Uh, you yeah, there it is. So JavaScript was originally written in C. It's also influenced oh, wow. by Smalltalk. So imagine, so JavaScript is a combination of I guess functional programming languages, in addition to, you know, object-oriented programming languages. All that functional can be object-oriented. So I know I don't want to start a religious war here around, <laughs> you know. And then you have SQL on its own, Cold Fusion on its own. So anyway, so Java, Java sits up here, you know, in the heritage. It has the biggest influence in C sharp. There's a big history around J sharp. Microsoft trying to have like a .NET version of Java, and then. You know, a lot of lawsuits, a lot of people getting angry. So it's like, all right, you know, we'll make our own, you know. And then we had Anders Heilsberg kind of make make our own language for it. But anyway, you know, long story short, it's this is really fascinating just to see, you know, that uh, there is the Olingo and this is basically the framework. But I think I think what you're going for here is something probably even uh, bigger than that. You know, we can do like a repository for OData Neo, the Java edition. And this Java edition will basically open up the door for so many different things when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, opening possibilities for querying over RISTful APIs. Uh, I'm assuming. So okay. So let's let's first look at the the look at the 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 uh, the, the 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 example that you have, and right. then we'll talk a little bit about you know OData Neo and how it comes at the cross section with Java. Go ahead. All right. Let's see. Um, all right can you yep we can see, see it all right yep. i'm wondering if i can uh can i split the screen um uh like show two windows at the same time you're gonna yes. have to share you're gonna have to share your entire desktop instead of oh, okay window yeah if you have dual monitors that would work too yep yeah, let right, me perfect. you know when you're ready. Hey, okay, here's a portal into the universe. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um okay, okay. So All right. Let me get one of these guys. A little browser going. Yeah. Okay, so um this is Whoa. <laughs> I am so sorry about that. I have no oh, you're, idea. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Like, I had no idea that Google <laughs> what, videos. What's, what's that like a Puerto Rican thing going on? I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. No worries. So that's uh, your, your local host. So you basically stood up a. Yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. So I used a. Um, you know, Olingo. Uh, I'm pretty sure uses um, it doesn't use your typical I think Spring Boot. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, um, mm-hmm. server. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm forgetting what it would be called, but it would just be like a. It, it would be much simpler than using Tomcat. Um, okay. it, which is what uh, uh this uh implementation uses. So. This is just a simple uh, OData server sample. As you can see, this is the entire Olingo repository. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now we're just in samples and then server. 
And mm -hmm. all we really have is, uh, you know, three directories, whereas, mm -hmm. you know, this EDM provider, um, and I don't know uh, what um, the, you know, C-sharp um, implementation of OData looks like, but, um, you know, this is our uh, entity data model provider. Um, and we just, you know, have these uh, CSDL ent entity types that are um, instantiated. And then we just add these properties uh, within an array. Okay. Um, so you do that up. by hand. You have yes. to specify. Okay. Yes. Got to specify uh, these properties. And as you can see, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you uh, make this request, um, you know, first requesting through the via the service document uh, and then also the metadata, um, which is, you know, yes. just what's given based on your EDM provider. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we have our, uh, you know, property names and um, the entity the types. This types. Is, yeah. yeah, this is very similar to that trip pin service that yep. uh, is shown on the OData website. Yeah. Um, and uh, and that's, you know, kind of just the bread and butter of these the, of Olingo. You know, you can create complex types. Um, yes. And uh, what you would do, um, you know, and, and this implementation just has a very simple processor. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it extends the collection processor, the entity processor, uh, primitive processor, et cetera, um, in one class. Um, and so, so, yeah. So, so let me ask you this. When you say provider, do you mean like a controller, like an endpoint? Is the provider the one where you specify which endpoint you're going to be hitting? Is that the entry point to your API? This, the provider really just um, provides mm -hmm. the metadata. Okay. So just yes. the metadata. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the thing um, with this implementation, um, Olingo will mm -hmm. actually do a lot of the work in the back end. Mm -hmm. um, so this servlet, for instance, um, mm -hmm. will essentially handle a lot of the stuff. Uh, this yep. handler dot process does a ton of work. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you uh, let's see, so we can go um, to the implementations of this, and we it'll take us to an OData for HTTP handler. Um, mm -hmm. And so when, for instance, when this request comes through, mm -hmm. uh, you know it goes to our servlet um, because our servlet is uh, processing. Um, via its service method, this HTTP server request. Mm -hmm. um, and then we instantiate a data provider, which because this isn't connected to any uh, database, mm -hmm. what, it, what it's doing is it's just providing dummy data via um, this data provider. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, nice. it's cre creating these this data right here. Um, and so... Uh, you know, this servlet does a lot of work. So this is what the entry point is, um, kind of oh, so as you were just talking about. The processor about. is the entry point. The processor, sorry, the servlet is the entry point. Yeah, right? so it, yeah, it, this takes in a request. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, we instantiate the data provider. Um, mm -hmm. And then we, uh, um, we also uh, initialize the service metadata. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, this cars EDM provider um, is created. The metadata is created given our EDM provider, and uh, then we have what's called an OData HTTP handler, mm -hmm. um, which basically uh, takes in um, these processors. Yeah. This. Uh, um, uh, where is it? Uh, basically, uh, the processor I mentioned before. Yeah. Um, which reads our data from the data provider, um, and then, and then kind of uses, and then the, provides yeah. the uh, the uh, the data to our um, handler. Yeah. 
Um, and then this processes it. So this does everything from um, passing the uh, request. Mm -hmm. um, it, it validates the version of the data. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, uh, it, it basically goes from from here and then it just goes very very deep into parsing um any possible um uri so uh -huh. for instance if this was uh and this implementation doesn't handle it but if this was you know for instance cars um filter equals x y or z mm -hmm. uh you know olingo has this parse uri function um nice. and does all of that in the back end um, okay yeah, so it can go pretty pretty deep, and but the the only issue is um, it kind of only supports uh, um, like four or five system queries. Yeah, um, and I know that in the C sharp side of things and the .NET side of things, yep, uh, a lot of stuff have been has been added. Yep, um, and that's one thing that I worry about with the whole Java side of things is yep. Um, you know, I, my implementation, I need to be able to go like uh, pretty deep um, mm -hmm. entity wise, like ne like four. You or have five. to do all the work, basically, like this part where you're defining for every property. That's yeah. that's you doing all the work that the .NET library today basically goes and does it for you. It creates an EDM model automatically for you. Wow. So basically, yeah, that's that's the that's why we go and say, hey, four lines of code, you have O data up and running. Right. Wow. So that's that's interesting. Right. Uh, as soon as yeah. I saw you setting up the properties one by one like that, I was like, oh, man, that. <laughs> so, so if so, if you <laughs> so if you change your model, if you add a couple of more properties, you have to go back and say, oh, yes. that's not. Nah, nope. Nope. You don't have. So, yeah, let's let's build a better O data library for Java then. Yeah, you have to go. Um, so if you had wanted another entity type, it, you would have to do a lot. Um, yep. And that's what I'm experiencing uh, for my own implementation. Like we yeah. we, we have a very complicated, uh, uh, you know, JSON that we need to parse and yeah. turn into, you know, plain old Java objects so that we can then convert them into OData entities. Mm -hmm. um, and the issue is like they're highly like they're they're very deeply nested and yep. um, Java Olingo can't necessarily handle like for instance if I wanted a um, property mm -hmm. that was a was a type mm -hmm. um, or was an entity type mm -hmm. um, I Olingo can't handle that um, it actually uh, doesn't support that type of property right. um, yet so. That's one thing that I think would help um, just, you know, very complex data models. Um, yeah. And Olingo can't necessarily support that at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. It might be. So so let me do this. Let me go back into. Let's try a couple of things. So I'm going to take your screen here for a second. Yeah. Th thank you for this demo, by the way. This is this is great. I yeah. think that, you know, this this can be like uh, the beginning of something even even bigger, you know, than just OData, but uh, let me just kind of, so what, what OData libraries, so on the OData website, what's in there today? So I know there is something in Java, okay, let's see. So they have Apache Olingo and then SDL OData frameworks, OData 4J, that supports up, oh, okay, so these are older version. And then there's this guy. So how old are these things? Like how much maintain maintenance? So this this thing, the last time it's been touched was like 16 months ago, which is okay for libraries. Like a library isn't as often uh, uh, updated as a, a, a live projects, like an enterprise project, so at least during development and stuff like that. Uh, so let's see here. So these guys have some implementation. Looks like, uh, let's see, getting started, viewed in the URL. I'm going to need to translate that from Japanese. <laughs> yes. You know, my Japanese is a little rusty. <laughs> so, 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 uh, it's a whole lot of HTML setting up all of that. Select entity. Yeah, that's just the website and how it works. Okay. 
So, so let me tell you this. It looks like there's only like, like in the .NET world, you have all of this, wow. right? And uh, it, which which is expected. I mean, even though the open data protocol is is open, you know, and and kind of outside of Microsoft at this point in time, you know, you know, it started there. So look at the JavaScript yeah. one. There's a whole lot. C++, there's a couple other platforms, even PHP, wow. So you see, that's a corner I've never even thought to visit, you know, thanks to you now, I'm, I'm looking <laughs> to this. Yeah, this is really great. This this makes me really happy. Uh, this one seems to be a bit up to date, 27 days. That's not too bad. It looks like not there bad, is a, yeah. So, so here's what we can do though, you know, because you know, either way, whether the implementation is going one way or another, we try to kind of drive certain standardization for building software in general. And I think you and I could benefit from kind of starting a series where we kind of translate whatever OData Neo is doing into Java, right? And basically be able to, what is the, re, what is the artifactory or the repository where uh, Java libraries go? Do you know? Um, a Maven. Oh, Maven. So that's your basically equivalent of NuGet. Okay, Maven is the uh, Maven. M A V. Yeah. Yeah, Maven Java. So that's the equivalent of Artifactory, where people keep all their libraries and stuff like that. I'm assuming. Okay. Okay, that's cool. And then you get to kind of navigate and, you know, see what I'm assuming it pulls in jar files or something like that. Right. Yes. Yeah, uh, it does. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I haven't used Maven in a very long time. It looks like Apache has such a strong hold in the in the Java world. There's always oh, Apache. Definitely. OK, definitely. that's that's cool. What do you think about that? Should we do OData new Java? We can play uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I th I think that sounds incredible. Okay. okay, and it'll be a great chance to kind of you know uh, you know kind of uh, jump into uh, the Java world, see what it's like to kind of do certain concepts because around the OData Neo there is the standard, the engineering standard that basically drives most of these implementation. So it, it'll be a very very welcomed addition to kind of see how people think differently in different languages and stuff like that. Um, uh, Ethan, I think also what's more important than this is that, you know, the ideas and patterns and building software should not be language specific. It's language agnostic. So it's really fun to kind of take that up to the next level and see what, what it's, what it takes, you know, to kind of build a quick Java API and then pull in, use Maven to pull in Odata Neo jar or something and yeah. uh, basically see how we can set that up to make it work in a in a nice way. What do you think about that? I think that sounds fantastic. I'm I'm really curious about what O Data Neo like has its uh, sites set on. Like, uh, what mm -hmm. type of? Um, I mean, because I I I really just love getting data from one place to another. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I that's problems where you know people are trying to figure out what is the best way to get data from point A to point B whether it be the fastest, uh, the safest, the most Patience. secure, yeah. uh, that, that, that stuff excites me. So, um, you know, and that's why I like OData data a lot because in Salesforce, you mm -hmm. can basically, the end user has no idea that the data is not actually in there, um, yeah. which is fascinating. Yeah. I mean, it's being just, you know, instantaneously grabbed from yep. our uh, OData service. Um, yep. And so, uh, I think that's that's pretty awesome, but I, I am curious. Like, what is the what is odata.neo like bringing to the table um, yeah. that past versions haven't? Yeah, absolutely. So, so here's what here's I, I published something a while back on the developers blog. Um, you know, for what odata.neo is and what it means, right? Yeah. And I basically talked a little bit about kind of three main concepts, right? I talked about uh, protocol agnosticism, and then I talked about transcendence, and I talked about modularity. What that basically means, let's just start with this one. I basically went and said, today OData seems to be a little bit too coupled with ASP.NET, which is basically the equivalent of Spring, right, in the Java world. 
I want people to be able to use OData, whether it's in gRPC, gPRC, whether it's in SOAP, WCF, whether it's even a console application, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, you can use it from anywhere and you're still able to kind of communicate and pull in, you know, uh, capabilities and offer capabilities for, uh, for, for, for the, you know, uh, uh, distributed systems world, right? So that's one part. A part of this protocol agnosticism is language agnosticism. So we're basically going and redefining the standard for OData. And we're basically saying, hey, ideally, we used to communicate RESTful API. Even if you go on the website for OData, it'll say the best way to REST. I don't want it to be REST specific. It can be any protocol specific. It doesn't have to be stateless or stateful. I don't care. It can be literally library to library or a component to component, but they're talking to each other through OData and, and they basically understand what it means. So there's that one part. And then there's the modularity part. The modularity part is that I want you to go and be able to go and say, I want to be able to go and specify a new model. Like, you know, when you do dollar sign filter, dollar sign select and all that, I want you to be able to go and build a new jar jar uh, library. And you basically can go and say, I want to do dollar sign sounds like. You can invent your own kind of query types, right? That's awesome. and that, yeah, so you can customize you know, the protocol itself to kind of fit a particular need that doesn't come to you outside of the box. So there's that part. And then uh, the last one here is transcendence. And this is very important. I want you to be able to receive an OData query, turn it into whatever internal expression uh, that you have, and then be able to fan out that query to other distributed systems. So basically, maybe you have students repository that's in an API, you have teachers in an API, you have courses in an API, and you have a query coming in that touches on all these three. I want your gatekeeper in a distributed system to be able to kind of fan out, kind of distribute all that in a way where you can actually look at it and be like, wait a second, you know, this is one query, but it gets distributed across multiple systems. This is really, really important. So imagine X query gets into X A, X B, X C, and then we gather these results back in and push it right back to the client. The client is none the wiser. They don't know what's actually going on, but in reality we took the we took their query and we distributed a clause across multiple systems. Okay. While we're building this system and while we're building this repository, I basically realized something. I realized, wait a second, while we're doing that, uh, new things have happened. We've been working consistently on this repository. You can see all the little mm -hmm. details about, you know, the exact same thing. And one of the things that we've come to realize is the fact that we want to go both ways. Like we're going to offer multiple capabilities for people to go and say, hey, I want my OData query as a SQL uh, query. I want my OData query as an expression. I want my OData query as whatever else is out there. You know, we want to, you to be able to kind of translate and, and, and transcend that, you know, into whatever protocol you like. I think you and I should go and build the, the OData Neo translation in Java. What do you think about that idea? I yeah. think that sounds like a, an incredible idea. Yeah. So look what I can do. I can basically go here and create like um, a, a OData Neo Java. Right, as a project and I can basically go into add a readme and I can go and say you know this is MIT and this is uh, I don't know what do you use for your do we have Java in here Java yeah there's Java and then okay so we have all of that and then I'm gonna create a repository and the next time we sync up we can hang out like once a week or something if you want and we can basically sit down, start architecting the solution. It's pretty much the same as the .NET one. The only difference is that it's written in Java, and you can actually use it in Java and leverage it in Java. What do you think about that? I think that sounds great. I'm excited. I'm pumped. <laughs> great. I am excited too. Um, and hopefully we can kind of, you'll find a lot of contributors. So there's, I know the Java community is huge. I know there's a lot of people out there you know, that love Java. They love to work with Java. If you do it in Java, that means automatically people who are using Kotlin and people who are using Scala automatically are benefiting from, from your Java implementation. Because if it works on Java, it works on Scala. If it works on Scala, it's going to work on whatever else is out there it's because they're all based on the JVM, I think. So, yeah. I, and I do love Scala myself. So it's going to be really, really fun. You know, if you if you didn't come from the Java side, I would have said, let's do it in Scala. 
but that's okay. the, I want to work with the language that you're more comfortable with. And it looks like you're, you're more comfortable with Java in that matter. So we can do it this way as well. I mean, it's chatty and nice. So people will be able to kind of see. I also want to see like from a different perspective, I want to see what it's like to take the engineering standard and apply it to a Java application. You know, how are we going to do the exceptions? How are we going to do all that kind of good stuff that we usually do in the in the .NET application. That would be very, very interesting cross cross technology kind of collaboration. Yeah, no, that would that would be very fun. Yeah, it'd be it'd be exciting. Uh, I uh, yeah, and I, 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 you know, I came into uh, programming through more of a statistics background. You know, I I did Python and a little bit of machine learning, and uh, found out that I really just enjoy building things more than doing statistics. And uh -huh. uh, Java is, you know just been my favorite so far so uh i'm i'm pumped to do it in java awesome i'm excited too and i appreciate you and uh you know what do you think any last remarks from your side before we wrap up no no uh just that uh i appreciate you taking the time and um it's been awesome to connect and uh i'm ready to get started ethan let's do it you know we have a repo please join our standard community as well if you have a discord Join our standard community. If you go to the standard uh, repository on GitHub, you'll find the link in there. Or even all data new repository, you'll find the link everywhere for, for the community. Uh, join us there, you know, see what we're talking about. And it would be really, really great to have someone from a different perspective coming into the community. And because the, the community is predominantly .NET. We have a bunch of PHP and JavaScript folks. It would be nice to see Java, some Java folks in there. Uh, Ethan, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Truly, sincerely, and uh, you know, I look forward to doing this with you. It's going to be fun, fun exercise. And uh, as usual, for the people watching us, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments from Mr. Ethan here and his amazing initiative, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in another video. Thank you, Ethan. Take care. <laughs> Bye. -bye.